Tim, you've been busy. Uh, uh, the pick, the TANF? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we talked all since the end of the year of trying to help ourselves on defense. Um, you know, as it got closer um, and it looked like potentially he's not going to be signing in Dallas, we wanted to jump the queue here as best we could and, uh, and you know, get to him before free agency started. So that's what we're going to do. I know the player well. Um, we'll get to work on it now. Excited to, at least excited to have an opportunity to speak directly with them and, and see what we can get, put, see if we can put something together. Well, you, you say that you've known him for a while. Yeah. What, what stands out? I mean, you seem like he, he'll eat pucks, yeah. block shots, and things like that. Just talk a little bit about what you saw from him in Calgary. Yeah, he, I mean, he's just an elite defensive player. Um, you know, we talk about offensive players seeing things and, and, Seeing plays early, he's, he does the same thing, but on the defensive side of the puck, an absolute warrior. Um, he's a culture he's a culture carrier for your room. Um, listen, I know the age he's at, um, but I think even in the last year, he's shown he's he's a, he's one of the top shutdown defensemen, one of the top defensive players in the league, and uh, he's a right shot. Um, he embodies everything you want in a teammate. Um, so for us to have him right now, it's exciting. Hell of a player and tremendous person. He'll be a big part of our group if we can get it all put together. How optimistic are you about playing Sorry? How optimistic are you about playing Well, we don't have an agreement yet. Um, so that's what we're working on, right? We're, we're, we've got, uh, what do we got here? 24 hours or so, 30 hours before free agency starts. So. Um, you know, we'll be in touch with them both. Our cap situation is what our cap situation is. We've got some holes to fill. Um, so we'll keep working on it and, until we get a conclusion, a positive conclusion, or, uh, or they hit the market. Will you qualify your RFA? Excuse me? Qualify your RFA? Yeah, we'll, we'll have something out on that here in the next little bit. We're working on sort of all those fronts right now. Sorry, I can't hear you. A full ter eight years? E oh, for ten. E well, we can't do eight years for ten. Yeah, no, the player's got to be on your reserve list as of the trade deadline to be able to sign an eight-year term. Just because we have his rights doesn't mean you're, he's, a, he's not, he's not, he's not, um, he doesn't qualify for an eight-year contract. So. Sorry, guys, I, I'm either going deaf or the Big yeah. 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 It's it's. Listen, I love everything about the draft. Just you said it's it's the interaction. It's the interaction with with hockey people. You know, you can walk across. You can walk three tables down. It gets every. I think it's unique in in the sports world. Um, I think probably the biggest driver, and I'm speaking specifically for myself, I think the biggest driver of, of potentially looking at going to remote drafts is strictly the timing. Everything being jammed up, like you guys all cover it, right? We've got the draft today. Everybody's going to scramble back to their places. We're actually going to, you know, knowing you've got to travel from West to East, we're going to, we're going to work out of here for the next couple of days to, to, do, to do free agency. So I think I think the biggest driver on maybe looking at being remote is just the scheduling, right? And it's it's the calendar, it's what it is. Um, but the draft is it's a special thing when you got everybody on the floor, and and uh, if indeed it is the last one, it'll be I'll miss it for sure. Where did you vote? I voted in I voted uh, to go to remote, and and it was it, like I say. I, my preamble was just to tell you where it's coming from. I love the draft. I'd love to do it every year. It's just, again, scheduling more than anything else. How, how concerned are you that the goalie market is pretty thin right now? How concerned am I at the goalie market? Well, we'll see what the goalie market is. You know, um, we've been poking around in it, and uh, we know we've got we've to shore that up on our end, and uh, we're confident that we can. What do you like most about that? Sorry. What do you like most about Ben? Well, Ben's a guy that our staff was real passionate about um, all year, you know, and, and and specifically when you go through the process of putting your list together, 
and you're digging in on it. He was a target that, that the group had and obviously you want to see how the board falls. Um, um, I think I talked about earlier of trying to get picks. You know, I know uh, Wes was really was nervous when I started talking about all these great ideas I had about trading down and and hoping we didn't get gapped up with the players. So that was, you know, you listen, the, the scouts are the ones that really know the players, right? They're the ones that put in the time. You trust your staff. Uh, we were able to get a, a second out of it. Um, and we were hopeful of just doing the, the homework that you do that, that we could get them where we got them. And, um, but I saw, I've seen the player lots, uh, watched a lot of video on him as well. Um, I think he's an underrated player right now. You know, he skates so well, the way he defends, he's able to gap up his puck retrievals. Um, I think the offensive side of his game is still going to grow. Um, he's a hard defender, um, high character guy, very competitive, lots to like with him. We were really excited about the pick. Yeah, Kevin, it was it just our, our draft board was thin, right? So so when you look at, you know, when you look at some of the, and you've seen a lot of pick movement here today. Um, number one was when we when I had a guy targeted, felt we could get him at a pick and get our guy later in the in the draft. And then, and then when the opportunity came to get a second next year, flip it for this year, um, that was really the thought process is trying to give ourselves a little bit of a, fill up the board a little bit for next year. How have you settled in with uh, getting to know all the staff and maybe even more importantly getting maybe some of the players over the last month or two? Yeah, it's been great. Um, obviously, I, I spent some time in Toronto meeting every, all the staff and getting to know them at the draft here too. So it's been great, to, uh, you know, to get all get to know everybody and the personalities and things like that. And then player wise, I've, I've pretty much talked to every player on the team in person, Zoom phone calls so it's been great you know looking forward to uh working with all these guys and it, obviously just acquired his playing his uh, negotiating rights but what do you like about chris tan if it works heart out? and soul guy you know he gives you everything he's got team guy you know lays it on the line every night um, as you guys know you can watch him play um so I, you know hopefully we get something done go ahead uh, what's that process like when you're meeting with guys? You try and just do it based on geography, role, like when you're trying to go to a new team and talk to different players all at once? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's just basically uh, just being yourself, you know, and, and whether it's on the phone, whether it's on Zoom, whether it's in person and talking to them about um, what type of coach I am, what, I'm, what, what to expect from me, what I expect from them. Getting to know them, their personalities, you know, talking to them about the, the the past, what went on, you know, lots of things like that. You know, it's not all hockey. It's uh, you know, get to know their their lives and their families and things like that too. So I try to get a good feel about everything. You, you go to you go to you and Mitch met for with a player oh, and a fan takes a photo. How do, how does that make you feel? Is it surprising? Is it annoying? Like it's not surprising at all. And, to be honest with you, I mean, I just, I forgot about it already. So it's nothing I could do about it. I don't, I'm focused on talking to the player. That's it, you know, and things happen. What were your thoughts on Mitch when you got to know him? Like that you didn't know about him? He's a, he's a, he's a character guy, he's a great person. Obviously a great player. Uh, I'm looking forward to coaching him. So don't you put the market, you know, in the time that you've you've been, short time you've been there, and just the reaction you've gotten, you know, across the city. Yeah, it's been it's been great. You know, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, yeah, I actually, you know, I was a player for a short time here in Toronto, and I I got a good feel back then for it. Um, I love playing here for a short time, and um, I'm really looking forward to coaching here. I mean, uh, again, it's Toronto Maple Leafs uh, original six team. I mean. Just the fan base, and uh, you know, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, Mark Savard obviously very well. Yeah. What do you like about what he brings in terms of? Yeah, I, uh, well, I played with Mark for a while, and as a player, and I love his personality. And you know, he was um, he was a great power play guy and offensive player, as you guys know. And uh, I I brought him in St. Louis uh, for a bit. Uh, ran the power play there, and I liked what he liked what he did. So, I think the familiarity. I wanted to bring him back, um, and I think he's going to work well with our power play. 
a bit of a ways away, but what's the one thing you want to instill with the team heading forward, whether it's the current roster or new players coming in? I think just um, an identity, you know, how we want to be as a team and how we want to play night in and night out. More than anything, identity. What what to expect? Like, this is what, what I'm looking for as a coach and what I expect out of you as a player. We were pretty empty there with draft capital for next year, so that was the best move there. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Easton has anything to do with that. Um, we got a process that we stick with. Um, and ben was pretty much the target all the way along, so lucky we got him. No, he was the guy all along, so we wanted him, so we took him. Yeah, for sure. I think one may come over uh, this, this year, but our European staff was extremely passionate for those guys, so um, we got them in a place, and they fell to us, so lucky to get them. Alenka. High intelligence, and he can zip a puck. Good shooter, real good shooter. Pretty good size, but we really like his intelligence. Yeah, I think what we like most about Victor is that he's very early in his development curve. Uh, strong intelligence, strong competitiveness, and excellent defensive instincts. So I think, uh, I think there's a lot of room to grow there. And he's got a couple older brothers, too, that have uh, shown well over the years as well. So, Absolutely. I mean, I think our development staff does a great job with, with a lot of our prospects. And, you know, something that jumped up for him as an underage last year when we tracked him was his offensive instincts. So... Um, you know, he's got to keep working at it and keep getting better. Um, compound that with what he does extremely well, and I think he's got real upside. So. What was uh, Brandon like for you with him getting drafted? Yeah, that was awesome. It was, uh, I think he was the best to talk to him, but I think he was sitting at the edge of his seat and uh, all very happy and proud for Jack. I mean, it's a great day for the Prudham family. What do you like about Matt? Matt Leahy? 6'5". Uh, really strong defensively, very physical. He's going to go to Fargo next year, so um, yeah, we'll see where that goes. Long term play. Sam McHugh. Scored 23 this year. He's got an edge to his game, 6'2, winger. Uh, Chrissy Rock, who's one of our top scouts, had a lot of passion for him. So Nathan Mays, his last pick of the draft, he's extremely physical, so big body. I think we know what Tree likes, so try to execute. <laughs> Oh, uh, one of our Russian scouts, Oleg, who's uh, one of our top scouts, is extremely passionate for him. Two-way game, competitive, knows where the puck is, knows where his teammates are. So we'll see, we'll see where he goes. He's going to Spartak this year, so long-term play again. You've got a lot of Russian goalies in the system, so what's it like about the goalies? Yeah, I don't know. I wish I could answer that for you. Talk to Mac. I mean, Mac liked him a lot, so uh, man, Victor Elm. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't answer that for you. It just seems like that's the, the trend here in the last number of years. What was the hold up there like in the second round? Like yeah, I don't know. That was just a mix up, I think, over at the table uh, where the NHL was. So, yeah. Did, uh, did the top one worry you like, earlier in his career? Or early in his career that kind of prevented him from going over there? No, I don't think so. Hey, listen, everybody's different, right? So, um, I mean, we know where he needs to what area he needs to attack. Uh, he's going to long-term play, right? So we'll see what, he is, what he's like in a few years.